today we are alien. So I've come into the room, which is literally like 10 meters, would you say, what? from the cows. They'll come out of the milk and parlor, they get split off from the splitting gate. We have explained all this in a previous video. So they get split off from the splitting gate because they're on high activity. And then we put them into the crush right next to the parlor. And then we come into this room, which is also right next to the parlor to get the semen. So yeah, the first thing I'll do is choose the semen that I'm going to use, which is in here. And because she's a first time, she's in her first lactation, so she's a young heifer. She's only ever had one calf before, so I'll definitely use sex on her because she's really nice, got no issues, nothing that would worry me. So I'm going to use sex. So we've actually got it all written down here, as you may have seen in our last video, of what we've got. So I think I'm going to use sex goon hilly on her. Um, which is in pot three. So pot three is right there, ready for me to go to the yellow one. So I just put it up. And then you can see they're sacks because they're red straws. So I want it out for as long, as least time as possible. So I just take one straw, put it back down, run over to the water, pop it in. Now this water is 37 degrees and the sack semen will now start defrosting. So I don't want it in there for too long, but I want it in there enough time that it will start defrosting. So while it's in there, I'm gonna put this back in here, that's quite important, and just get myself ready. So I need my rod, I need a sheath, which you'll see what's that for in a minute, and I'll be needing a glove. And then I'm gonna get myself some green roll, and I'm just gonna warm everything up. So because that's 37 degrees, I don't think it's quite 37 degrees in this room, so everything's a bit cooler. And you don't want the semen going from cold to hot, cold to hot. It would just like mess up and the semen will start to die and all. So using this, I'm just going to briefly try and warm everything up. <laughs> this really gets my muscles going first thing in the morning. So yeah, I'm literally, the reason I'm doing this is just to keep it, like try and get up to 37 degrees if I can. This little um, thing as well is really good because you can see the green light there, which is showing that this whole thing is at the right temperature. So I do it to the sheath as well. If you're doing a few cows, you only really need to warm this up once because once it goes in a cow, it will kind of stay warm. Whereas for these sheaths, um, you don't reuse these. It will go in the bin after I've done that cow. So you have to do that every time. So once I've done that, it's definitely been 30 seconds. So I'll go back over to my semen. Now you definitely, definitely don't want it to be wet. If water contaminates with the semen, it will start killing it off. It won't work as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just dry it. So I've dried the top and then I just like flick it a bit so that the semen goes down to the bottom, so I'm not going to cut any off. And once I've dried it, I'll put that in the filator and I'll put it into my, my rod. So I literally just, oh, which when you're being filmed, it's really quite hard. You just put it into that small hole and you can see it's just sitting there now. So obviously to store the semen to make sure it doesn't come out, they've clamped the end so that like when it's being stored and when it's in the water, no water will go in. So I'm just going to cut the end off so it's no longer clamped so there's now a hole at the top there which is where the semen will come out from when it's in the cow and this is where my sheath comes in so i'm going to put this over the top oh oh <laughs> that green thing will slide onto the top of it and then i just push it all the way down and then it's ready to go and then i push that up until it reaches the bottom of the straw you can feel there's like a resistance and then to keep it nice and warm and just to store it i'm going to pop it down my back Ooh la la, wee oui, wee. Oui. So you put a sheath on it to hold the um, straw in place because obviously without it, it would fall out. If I went up to the cow and put the rod in, the semen would just, you need the sheath there to kind of hold it all together. Yeah, it keeps the plastic straw in the rod, but then lets the semen out. That's it. Oh, and right. I need my glove and you'll see why in a minute. And I am literally ready to go. So I'm going to get some lube. We always make sure we get the cow ready first. So when we go in there, we can quite literally just go in. So this lube is just see-through lubricant just to help me go into her bum without causing anyone pain. I should just slip straight on in. Follow me. Let's go. So this is the journey from the room to the crash. Dun -dun 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 Here so she is. This cow is Yes, we actually need a name for her if anyone fancies it. So she, um, Casper is another heifer that looks very, very similar to this one. So any so, ideas, yeah. comment. So um, because it's sexy, I want to try and get in as quick as I can. So I will straight away. So this hand is going up the bum, not the vagina. So it's going up the bum. So you can see her whole there. I just go straight in with that. 
Um, basically, cows are pretty much exactly the same as humans. So what I want to do is get the semen through the cervix. So I've got the cervix now. So she's got a wall. She's got a vagina. She's got a wall, and then she's got her bum. And I've gone in through the bum, but through the wall, I can feel her cervix. I can literally hold it in my hand. And with my green wall, I'm just cleaning her vagina because you cannot get the rod dirty. You don't want to be putting um, poo through the through the vagina. And then basically, I just want to guide. the rod through the cervix like so so if she's bullying which she is it should just slip through so i'm through now i can feel i'm through with this hand i can feel the end of the rod through the cervix yeah. put my thumb on there and i just release that's injecting the semen into her um womb basically her uterus and then i just pull it back out and my hand out and this is why we wear a glove and that's why we wear a glove and it's as easy as that she can now go join her friends in the field and she's done within i think that's taken five minutes if that not even that um so yeah it's literally as quick as that and then like i said i just take the sheaf off that's the bit that you can see the seam in there obviously the semen's not in there anymore it's just the straw and then i just put all of that into the bin and then you can reuse this rod and it's like your arm has never been up a cow's bum. And then it's Poppy's turn. <laughs> Next up is Jane. So once we let Casper's friend... Oh, it looks like we're going to have to do him too. Way. <laughs> so once we let Casper's friend go, um, we can let Jane in. And now she's got her head caught so that she can't go anywhere. And um, that's obviously vital just so that we don't get trampled and she obviously won't... Fun fact about anymore. Jane... Fun fact about Jane is Jane was the first cow that I ever, ever, ever AI'd. Like ever. So the first time I ever AI'd cow, it was Jane here. That was all of four years ago, it must have been. Gosh, yeah. that's scary. Because then her daughter um, was obviously... Yeah, so important information she caught, didn't she? Yeah, first so ever she AI. Caught, yeah. Don't want to brag too much. Yeah. <laughs> so she caught and then her daughter was born. So it was my first ever AI calf. Um, so I called her Erin after my daughter. So Jane and Erin are now a part of the herd, aren't you, girls? We've both got daughters called Erin. That is so cute. Yeah, and Erin is actually in the herd now, a really strong member of the Clark and Hill herd, looking really good and strong. Um, legend, yeah. legend. So we're anyway. back into this room, and we're going to do, well, Pops is going to do Jane now. I don't know if I can cope with the pressure. No. The heat is on. The heat is, is on. on. <laughs> Um, so all of the cows we are currently AIing all calmed down in a spring just gone. So they would have started calving in February through till March. And so they're all being served now in order to carve next spring again. So we actually carve in two blocks here in Clark and Hill. So we carve one block in the spring and one in the autumn. So we try and keep that roughly the same. So the idea is they carve down once a year. So like I said, the ones that are being served now will carve again next spring. So we've been AI and as Josie just said, about four years now. So up until then we only used bulls, which worked really well while it did, but then we actually had a bit of trouble. By the way, I do that to check it's warm. I'm not just really weird. <laughs> I just did that and then I was like, that looks strange to the outside eye. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so we had a bit of trouble with a bull one year and went to AI and just to get everything in calf. And then we've never looked back. So me and Josie went on a course to learn how to do it and yeah, yeah I've done it ever since. We find it works really, really well. Um, it's really easily accessible from our setup. We can use bowls that we like the look of and because we're doing it ourselves, Are you know. Are you now? Yeah. Oh. I tend to do that and then once the straw is on, I'm just ready to go then. This is it, is everyone does everything completely differently. Yeah. But I thought you lost you your head the then. But... Yeah. And like now I just do it like without thinking, like for the first, two years i kind of had to keep reading like yeah we had a little slip note step. to read um but yeah it's like muscle memory now it's a bit like riding a bike i think once you know how to do it you're away yeah um uh, but yeah so that's roughly the story so we ai them for six weeks and then so we give them two chances if they don't catch the first time we'll do it again then if they don't catch that time we put the bull in for three weeks so he has a chance to sweep a penny that have not managed to catch then usually by then you've got everyone in calf ready to go. So 
yeah, it works really well for us. And I don't know about Josie, but I actually really enjoy AI. Yeah, I enjoy AI. Um, and our success rate is we do it because oh we. My God. Oh my gosh, I just got attacked. Because we do it ourselves, um, we can do it during milking. So if a cow gets split off, we can do her immediately. Um, or at least within half an hour anyway. And that actually makes such a massive difference to our results. We also make up a straw after each cow. So if we've got five cows out here, we won't make up five straws and come out with five. We'll do what, make up a straw, do one cow, go back, make up another straw, just so it gives the semen that longer life inside the cow. And that also makes a massive difference, we think, to our success rate. Um, but yeah, other farmers will be watching this, like we do it completely differently. Like it is all what suits you as a farm, your cows and you as a person. Yeah, and the setup you have and everything like that. So the main difference between AI and then and a bull coming in is a bull wouldn't actually guide his penis all the way through the cervix. So we're doing it this way. We've got a lot more accuracy as to where the semen's going. There is a lot less semen. Like in the straw, there is literally, I think, millions, isn't there? Yeah. Um, whereas bulls would be bulling all day, giving off lows, but it's just, it's not got the accuracy that we've got by doing it like this. So the chances of them getting in calf, as long as everything is good, should be quite high um, because we're guiding it right through. So, yeah, so a bull would just drop it before the cervix, sometimes way away from the cervix whereas for we actually put it through the cervix straight into the uterus and then like essentially right by the horn so it ha really hasn't got to travel far for her to catch so that one's done um as quick as that like same technique as what josie did and yeah she's good to go so yeah we ai the main reason we ai rather than the bull is just because um We've got so many cows now, it's too much work for a bull. And like Poppy said, we can choose our bulls. We're a bit more accurate with who has what. Like sex semen is basically where you just give them female semen. So um, Kodron or Genus, whoever we're using at the time, they will have already taken out all the male semen. So we're just giving her female, meaning she's 99% gonna have a girl, which we yes. haven't yet had a boy off sex semen so we're doing no, well it's possible, but it's very, very low i chance. think it is 99 percent, isn't it yeah so um yeah it works really well on our dairy here because obviously we're constantly wanting heifers to replace the cows to come into the herd so girls like female calves is what we want mostly so that is why we use the sex semen then yeah as we all know this is lottie and she doesn't know how to ai no but you know how to fetch them in don't you girl so the biggest thing with AIing is making sure that it's a really stress-free process because if they're all worked up and a bit stressed out then they're not going to catch um, they won't get in calf if they're feeling really upset or anything like that so we try to do it as quick as we can we've done them a little bit later this morning because we filmed it for YouTube um, but normally we would do it if not during milking definitely straight after and then they just join the cows um, because yeah the quicker you do it the better it goes the less stressed they are and then the more chance of them catching so there's so many things that are involved with making sure that they um get pregnant and yeah being stress-free is like a massive one so they're just going to go and join the herd now join the cows out in the field thank you for watching <laughs> bye see you next week <laughs>